Travis Kelsey said he was on top of the world after winning the Super Bowl, but getting there wasn't easy. From losing a scholarship to nearly having his NFL dreams dashed, the Chiefs star had to overcome many roadblocks on his path to success. Travis Kelsey grew up shadowing his older brother Jason in Cleveland Heights, Ohio. According to their mother Donna, he didn't just want to do everything his big brother did, he wanted to beat him at it. She told the Today Show, Everything was a competition. It's just typical sibling rivalry. They egged each other on. While Travis and Jason felt driven to compete from a young age, Donna didn't allow them to play grade school football. Safety was a concern, as was the possibility of her boys learning the game from an inexperienced coach. Instead, Travis and Jason played backyard football with their father, Ed. Travis believes that his natural athletic ability comes from his mom, but it was his dad who introduced him to a variety of sports. In addition to football, the Kelsey brothers played street hockey, baseball, and handball. According to Kelsey's high school football coach, Mike Jones, the future NFL star was never a nose-to-the-grindstone type of guy. Jones told Cleveland.com, He was a jokester, and he wanted to play a little bit. Making sure that he looked his best was also important to Kelsey. His hometown barber, Alex Quintana, told ESPN that Kelsey worked his charismatic magic on the school's security guard so that he could sneak out and get his hair cut. But when the barber asked Kelsey why he wasn't in school, the teenager told him that football players were allowed to leave early on game days. However, when Quintana told Kelsey that his coach would soon be coming in to get his own haircut, Kelsey realized he was caught and bolted for the door. Jones told NFL.com that Kelsey's female classmates were also very fond of him. He was such a big ladies' man that his coaches worried if all the attention he was getting would affect his performance on the field. Jones said to the outlet, He was a good-looking kid, as you can see now. Travis just had that swag, and the girls were just all over him. That was a thing that we had to make sure we tried to monitor a little bit. In high school, Travis Kelsey was one of those rare athletes who excelled at just about every sport. He played basketball and pitched on the baseball team. He was also the star quarterback of the football team. Jeff Rodsky, who coached Travis during his senior year, told Cleveland.com, Trav, he's the only human being I've ever known that could have been a Division I football, basketball, and baseball player. He was unbelievable. But Travis found his strength and speed useless in the classroom, telling people, I wasn't the best student in terms of reading and doing math and everything. One class he struggled with in particular was French. When he failed it as a freshman in 2005, he missed out on his only opportunity to play alongside his brother on the school's football team. Donna Kelsey told the New York Post that Travis could have gone to summer school to make up for his failing grade, but she wouldn't let him. Instead, he learned a valuable lesson in accountability. Travis still got to spend time with his brother on the sidelines, however. In his role as trainer Trav, he offered assistance to injured teammates and made sure that they stayed well hydrated during games. Travis's decision about where to go to college was easy. He just followed his brother to the University of Cincinnati. Travis was given a scholarship to play quarterback for the school, but he redshirted his freshman year. The next year, he tested positive for marijuana and subsequently lost his scholarship over the failed drug test, along with his reason for being in Cincinnati. That I know I didn't make everybody really that proud, you know? Instead of going home to lick his wounds, Travis moved in with Jason. He told The Guardian, I wasn't paying rent, he was helping me with food, so I was literally living off him for quite a while down there and he was my lifeline. To not be so much of a financial burden, Travis got a telemarketing job asking people for their opinions about the Affordable Care Act. He recalled to NFL.com, I was just getting yelled at every single day. Jason went to bat for his baby bro and managed to convince the school's coaches to let him rejoin the team. However, Travis had to agree to a key change. He'd be playing tight end. The experience taught him what a treasure his older brother is. Travis told The Guardian, When I say I owe it all to him, I really do. Travis Kelsey ended his collegiate football career on a high note when he was named tight end of the year at the 2012 College Football Performance Awards. But during the 2013 NFL Scouting Combine, the Baltimore Ravens general manager, Ozzie Newsome, wasn't too thrilled about speaking to him. Growing up in Cleveland, Travis had naturally become a Cleveland Browns fan. So he couldn't wait to tell Newsome, a former Browns tight end, that his family owned an autographed photo of him. When he got to the meeting, however, Newsome quickly dispensed with the niceties and forced Travis to watch a compilation video of some of his hot-headed behavior on the field. Travis's tendency for drawing penalty flags was clearly an issue for Newsome, whose first question for him was, Son, are you a f***ing asshole? Kansas City Chiefs coach Andy Reid also dropped some expletives during a phone conversation 
conversation with Travis. Travis recalled to Sports Illustrated, he goes, yeah, listen, are you gonna f*** this up? Apparently, Travis's word wasn't good enough because Reed asked to speak to Jason Kelsey. Reed had previously coached the Philadelphia Eagles, so he knew how hard of a worker Travis's older brother was. Travis said, I still have no idea what he said to Jason. I'm assuming they had a mutual agreement, like, if he f***s this up, we're both kicking his ass. After getting drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs in 2013, Travis paid tribute to his brother by wearing the number 87 on his jersey. Travis told NFL Films that he chose the number because it's Jason's birth year. Unfortunately, Travis didn't get much of an opportunity to prove himself on the field during his rookie season. At training camp, he suffered a bone bruise in his knee and later had to undergo microfracture surgery to repair a cartilage defect. He played in just one game that season. In an interview with Sports Illustrated, Travis confessed to partying like a rock star after getting injured. He even had to move because the amount of activity at his apartment was angering his neighbors. He also started spending like a rock star. While he'd signed a four-year, $3 million rookie contract that included a signing bonus worth over $700,000, he confessed to almost going broke during his first year in the NFL. On New Heights, he said he was left with around $600,000 of his bonus to spend after taxes admitting only thing I really got uh, left or to show for that money is a pair of uh, some of my favorite shoes those shoes were a pair of Nike Air Mags inspired by the sneakers Marty McFly wears in Back to the Future 2 which cost him around $10,000 while speaking to Sports Illustrated, Travis revealed that he's a believer in the old mantra that any publicity is good publicity. However, he was initially hesitant to sign on for the 2016 e-reality series Catching Kelsey. The premise was almost the same as The Bachelor, but there was a twist. Each U.S. state was represented by the 50 women competing for Kelsey's affection. He turned E down a few times, but eventually caved because he needed the money. He said on the Pivot podcast, and They came to me with an offer financially that I was just like, all right, man, I gotta do this. However, Kelsey was unhappy with the finished product, saying, But at the end of the day, um, I don't think I got portrayed as myself. His relationship with the winner, Kentucky native Maya Benberry, was also short-lived. Not long after he and Benberry broke up, he met longtime girlfriend Kayla Nicole via social media. Kelsey told E! News that he got Nicole's attention by liking every one of her posts. I was just stalking her, and then finally uh, on New Year's she gave uh, she gave in. And After five years of dating, however, Kelsey and Nicole broke up in 2022. The Kelsey brothers will never be on the field at the same time, as they both play offense. But it was still a big story when they played in their first NFL game together in 2017. Ahead of the game, Jason spoke to Chiefs.com about Travis's pregame behavior. He quipped, He's a very humble, very reserved guy. He doesn't talk any trash whatsoever, as you've seen. By then, Travis had established himself as the more impulsive, playful sibling. He was known for dancing in the end zone, and he hadn't quite kicked his collegiate habit of drawing penalties. It was during that game at Arrowhead Stadium where Donna Kelsey debuted her split Chiefs Eagles jersey with Travis's number on the front and Jason's number on the back. Kansas City won the game 27 to 20, and Travis contributed to the victory by scoring a touchdown. Jason recalled to NFL Films, "Half of me is like, this is that was a huge point in the game, so I'm furious, and the other half of me is like, that's a really good play, Travis." <laughs> After the game, the brothers exchanged jerseys, and Travis surprised Jason by kissing him on the cheek. But Andy Reid might have later rained on Travis's parade. According to Arrowhead Pride, the coach seemed pretty peeved about Travis earning a taunting penalty during the game. The Kansas City Chiefs 2019 season culminated in a Super Bowl victory, making both Kelsey brothers decorated NFL champs. After the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl in 2018, Jason dressed in a colorful outfit and delivered a passionate speech during his team's victory parade. Meanwhile, Travis's parade outfit wasn't as eye-catching or sparkly, but it did cost a pretty penny. According to TMZ, his charcoal Louis Vuitton coat retailed for nearly $19,000. Travis's outfit included the custom WWE Championship belt that was gifted to the Chiefs. He was clearly feeling the celebratory vibe because he ended his speech with a Beastie Boys lyric. You gotta fight for your right to party! Travis had previously turned the chorus of his favorite song into a pun not long after the Chiefs beat the 49ers 31-20 in Super Bowl 54. In his post-game interview with NFL Game Day Prime, Travis sang, You gotta fight for your right to Lombardi. Jason then crashed the interview to congratulate Travis and make a prediction about his victory speech, quipping, He's gonna have the best speech, next to mine. 
Right after he won his first Super Bowl, USA Today quoted Travis Kelsey as telling reporters, "...motivated to do it again, for sure." These were not hollow words. The following season, the Kansas City Chiefs made it to the championship game again, but this time they suffered a disappointing loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Travis said during a Sirius XM NFL radio interview, "...it don't mean a thing if you ain't got the ring, baby." Travis didn't get another shot at winning a ring in 2022, but he did start making some big moves off the field. He and Jason launched their New Heights podcast, which is named after the part of Cleveland where they grew up. Listeners quickly discovered that the siblings didn't need to rely on guests to be entertaining. During the first episode, they argued over which of their Super Bowl wins was more epic. Jason told his brother, "...you have more Pro Bowls. You have more All-Pros. Let me have the Super Bowl, okay? Just stop being selfish, all right? You're better looking. Let me have one damn thing, please." By the time the third episode aired, their show had become Spotify's most popular sports podcast, and the Kelseys further capitalized on its success by launching a line of New Heights apparel. Travis told Forbes in a December 2022 interview, "...it's fun to just do something with my brother weekly." As soon as the sports world learned that the Eagles and Chiefs would be heading to Super Bowl 57, the Kelsey family quickly became a hot commodity. Thus, throughout the lead-up to the big game, every member of the family topped the list of who the media wanted to talk to. After all, for the first time ever, two brothers would be playing against each other in the championship game. It's going to be an emotional game, that's for sure. Travis and Jason's parents had to endure endless questions about who they were rooting for, and their sons even grilled them about this on New Heights. Everyone also wanted to know how the brothers felt about their sibling rivalry reaching a new level. In a Fox Sports interview, Travis admitted that he and Jason had thought about the possibility of the Kelsey Bowl happening before it became a reality. Furthermore, he already seemed to be thinking about the inevitable Hollywood take on his family's football fairy tale, saying, "...I'll tell you what, you couldn't have scripted it any better." Unfortunately, the game was going to be bittersweet for one Kelsey brother. However, Jason was a gracious loser. He gave his younger brother a big hug and told him, "...go celebrate." On New Heights, Jason revealed what was on his mind during the emotional moment they shared on the field, telling Travis, "...you know, I knew that you were going to feel bad for me and I didn't want that." Back in 2014, Travis Kelsey spoke to Grantland about why he danced to celebrate touchdowns. He said to the outlet, "...I enjoy being the one on TV. I enjoy being the show. I enjoy making people laugh." Fast forward to 2023, and Travis was given a huge opportunity to showcase his comedic ability beyond doing a few quick dance moves. In an interview with Uproxx, Saturday Night Live cast member Heidi Gardner, who's a huge Chiefs fan, revealed that she'd been lobbying hard to get Kelsey on the show long before he became a two-time Super Bowl champ. His Kelsey Bowl victory finally earned him an invite, and Gardner was thrilled. She even personally ensured that Kelsey had some of his favorite snacks to munch on while he was rehearsing for the show. Telling the outlet, "...I was asking him, what's your game day routine?" He was like, "...oh, you wouldn't believe it, but I eat Uncrustables." Kelsey was game to participate in some pretty wacky sketches. In one, he creeped everyone out at an American Girl Cafe by dining alone with two doll companions. His performance was rewarded with a glowing remark from Lorne Michaels, who told Vanity Fair, "...I think he killed it. He's a natural. He was a presence from the moment he walked out." On New Heights, Kelsey said he had a blast and would definitely do the show again. The year 2023 just kept getting better for Travis Kelsey when he signed with CAA after his Saturday Night Live triumph. But after he revealed himself to be a Swifty on a July episode of New Heights, Travis's entire world changed practically overnight. It started with a story about his failure to give Taylor Swift a friendship bracelet during one of her Arrowhead Stadium concerts. By late September, Swift was at Arrowhead once again, but this time she was in attendance to cheer Travis on in a game against the Bears, immediately sparking rumors of a romance between the two. Swifties soon became desperate to learn everything they could about Travis, and they naturally turned to his podcast. Travis and Jason Kelsey even filmed a special edition of one of their New Heights segments, No Dumb Questions, Swifties Version. They earnestly tried to help Swifties better understand the game of football by answering questions such as, "...what's a field goal?" Meanwhile, the NFL couldn't get enough of the trailer show. Its Instagram bio was even changed to read, "...Chiefs are 2-0 and as Swifties." after Kansas City won the back-to-back -back game Swift attended. However, Travis thought the league was going a bit overboard with his budding romance, saying on New Heights, "...they're overdoing it." They're, they're overdoing it a little bit, for sure. But while speaking to the media, he revealed that the attention didn't bother him. He went on to add, "...I was on top of the world after the Super Bowl, and right now even, uh, even more on top of the world." 